It's been revealed through an interview with ComicBook.com at the ongoing CinemaCon in Las Vegas that prolific screenwriter Aaron Sorkin has some meetings lined up with both Marvel and DC to discuss possibly working together on an upcoming project. I happen to have meetings coming up with both DC and Marvel. I have to go into these meetings and tell them as respectfully as I can that I've never read and I've never read a comic book. It's not that I don't like them. It's just I've never been exposed to one. So I'm hoping that somewhere in their library is a comic book character that I'm going to love and I'm going to want to go back and start reading from the first issue on. Mark, would you buy or sell either DC or Marvel movie written by Aaron Sorkin? Uh, I don't really care about it. I know everybody loves Aaron Sorkin to death. I think he said some really dumb I just, every time I hear a, something come out of the guy's mouth, he just seems like he's a little bit better than everybody else. If you want to come off your ivory tower and read a comic book and get invested in a character, fine. I don't need an Aaron Sorkin movie, so this may be the most unpopular opinion you've ever heard. I'm going to sell him ever doing a DC or Marvel movie because I don't care about it. We have plenty of people that are right for those jobs, more so than Aaron Sorkin. He can just write another walk and talk movie for all I care. Uh, I would insanely buy this. He's might be the best in the world right now. This is his recent <laughs> resume, okay? Steve Jobs, The Newsroom, which I thought was a brilliantly written show. Moneyball, Social Network, Charlie Wilson's War. He wrote The West Wing, of course. He wrote A Few Good Men. You Look, I've always said before, it's never a mistake to add talent. You want to take a guy who knows how to develop characters and create subplots and create great tension on screen, create great believable conflict, whatever. You're talking about one of the best writers in the world. Is he a bit of a dick off camera? Maybe. It maybe he's a bit of a, a bit of a dick when it just in real and personal life. I don't give two craps. The guy's a great writer. You bring a guy like this on board to either Marvel or DC then you dangle a character in front of him that gets his attention and gets, gets him to like a particular character. Then you give him a year to just develop a story around that thing. You are looking at possibly one of the top three or four best written, at any rate, comic book movies ever made. I don't care if it's DC or Marvel. And so as a fan of all comic book films, be they DC or Marvel, I desperately want to hear that one of these two companies get this guy on board. Now, you know what's happening right now. It's Marvel and DC. This is, it's not even going to be a bidding war. It's not going to be about money. Right now, you got Marvel and DC making pitches to this guy, dangling characters in front of him to try to get him allured into one of them. And whichever one he goes with, I think you're looking at the next great franchise. Maybe you're underselling it. Maybe I'm overselling it. Break this tie. Well, like my grandmother used to say, Mark, your head's broken, kid. Uh, my uh, head is fine. This, this is a big, big buy. I mean, I think DC has a better shot of getting them. I, I think, actually agree. I think they do. Because I think DC is in a place where we're just like, if you get the same reason that you're going after someone like a Mel Gibson, you're going after someone like Aaron Sorkin, you say, is Aaron Sorkin? He's gonna. T he's gonna. We're gonna give him this character with Black Adam, maybe. And you give <laughs> you give him this character. He goes on. And he and he does it. And um and he's got his version of it. And you let him go. You're like it's Sorkin. Marvel doesn't really have the luxury of doing that because there's certain ways that they have already the, all this connected tissue with their with their cinematic universe that it's harder if Sorkin says, well, I want to kind of maneuver and do this. And you get into an Edgar Wright situation mm -hmm. to where Edgar Wright wanted to do what Edgar Wright wants to do because that's how he writes stuff. And Edgar Wright, to his credit, already was connected to Ant-Man way before the MCU. So it, yeah. just, it just was a strange pairing at that point. DC can afford to let him go because that's such a young cinematic universe. If he wants to veer off a little bit, all right, Sorkin wants to change that, we can afford to do that. I think DC's going to get him. I think that they should get him. And I loved his comments. And, and the fact is, like, oh, I'm going to have to tell him, no, you're not, because you just told him in, the, in, the, in this press interview that, that exactly, now, now they know that you don't read comics. And I bet you that they assumed it from the get-go. They don't care that you haven't read comics. But he'll do the research. He'll get great characters. His writing is fantastic. I loved Steve Jobs. I loved it. I thought it was so brilliantly written. What he does is going to be great. And I want him to be a bit of a dick if he's going to have, if he's going to put that flair into character. If it is for Marvel, maybe he'll give us a more in depth villain. Maybe we've got a really a good written <laughs> villain this time around. Uh, so I'm all for uh, Steve Jobs. I'm all for uh, Sorkin <laughs> writing this one of these movies. I hope that he does it and I hope it happens. Wouldn't you just rather see him do something else that he's more comfortable doing as opposed to having to squeeze what he wants to do into a shared universe? Because you can say the DCU is younger. It's also really really struggling to find its footing. I don't think Aaron Sorkin is going to be the guy that you lean on to do all these movies going oh, forward. I disagree. I he's going to he's going to write a movie. He's not going to want to write 10 comic book movies. Maybe not, but he could but give he you set he, the direction. He sets the direction exactly. The, the fact that he's that if he gives you a certain way to go and for a certain way to follow that the rest of these writers and directors because to DC's credit, they're going after some heavy hitting 
directors and writers to try to write the ship. Um, and this is a way to do it. I think it's brilliant. I think that DC would benefit from him a lot more than Marvel. I don't think Marvel needs him. I think DC needs him. I think DC needs him to, uh, for, to write. Because if you can get the DC Cinematic Universe, no matter what you think, whether you love Batman v Superman, whether you hate it, it hasn't had a movie yet that, that has been said, wait a minute, that is, that, that's a Dark Knight type writing. That's the type of guy that can get you the Dark Knight type writing of a, of, yeah. a, of a movie. That's the type of guy that can make you look at a, like the type of attention. The answer to your question is why you need him for this, because the kind of attention you get from an Aaron Sorkin writing your movie is a lot different, even than it is from like a Mel Gibson, obviously, with the baggage that he's had, or even if it's from someone else who's done, the Russo brothers who came from comedy, it was a nice move, but it's not Aaron Sorkin, who is a brilliant Oscar-nominated winning t t uh, writer. You know? Yeah. And you know, for anybody who might be concerned about the whole thing about him saying, I haven't really read comic books, don't worry about that for a second. He didn't personally know Steve Jobs. He didn't personally know right. Research, all the people man. behind the social network. He didn't personally know everybody behind Moneyball. He researches, he finds out everything there is to know, he finds the angle, and then he writes it. And he's done a magnificent job at that, so I would have no fears whatsoever. Because uh, he will, he's proven. He gets himself acquainted with the subject matter first, and once he totally knows it, then he goes into it. By the time he puts pen to paper on either a Marvel film or a DC film, he's going to know that character as well as anybody else in the world. So I, I don't think there's anything to worry about on that mark. But we'll see how that turns out.